Hi, I'm Rohas Nagpal. In this video, we are going to explore some of the security and data privacy related options and features of the Chrome browser. Let's click on Chrome and Preferences. Now this shows us a lot of settings here. The first thing we would notice is on startup, what should we do? This is one of the interesting options to put in that continue where I left off or you could open a specific page or set of pages to set that you could click here and of course you can add a page like this and say okay subsequently if you want to cancel this that's very easy to do and you can set up multiple pages which could be opened up automatically when you start your browser say okay and of course the simplest option would be to open a new tab page let's have a look at the advanced settings now the first one that we can see is called privacy now let's have a look at what settings we have for it now the first one says allow local data to be set the second one says keep local data only until I quit my browser. The third one would block any site from set setting any data. And the fourth one would block third party cookies and site data. Now it would depend upon what activities you're going to do with the browser. And based on that you're going to select your options. The simplest way is to simply go with what is recommended. Now here of course you can manage exceptions. Where for different sites you can set the default behavior whether that data and cookie should be allowed cleared on exit or blocked the next thing is images the recommended setting is to show all images again here you can manage exceptions then it comes to javascript the option by default or the recommended option is to allow all sites to run javascript Again, this is your call, but without JavaScript, a lot of the sites may not actually open up properly. Then we have the plugins. We can choose to either run them automatically, click to play or block. Again, exceptions can be managed from here. Plus we can disable individual plugins from this option. Pop-ups, nobody really likes them. So you can simply say, do not allow any site to show pop-ups. But of course I could have exceptions here if I want to. Then we have the location, whether sites should be allowed to track your physical location or you should be asked when a site tries to track your physical location. This is the recommended option. Of course, you could also say do not allow any site to track my physical location. Then of course you can manage the exceptions for that. Then we have the notifications. You could say allow all sites to show desktop notifications or you should be asked or it should not be allowed. Again, this is the recommended option. Then we have an interesting option here about mouse cursor. Now some sites can disable your mouse cursor. So we can either allow that or we would be asked before that happens or we would not allow that. Lastly, we see the automatic downloads. Now here we could allow all sites to download multiple files automatically, but that's not recommended. It's ideal that you should put the second option where you would be asked when a site tries to download files automatically after the first file. Once you're done with all this, you would just click on done. In my case, since this is just a demo, I'm not really saving these settings. So I would cross it out. Going back to the privacy settings. We could clear browsing data by clicking here. Then we have a lot of options here where definitely you should have this checked, which enables phishing and malware protection. We should ideally check this option, which says send a do not track request with your browsing traffic. Of course, what we must understand is that enabling this do not track means that a request will be included with your browsing traffic. But what we must remember is even despite this setting, many websites will still collect and use your browsing data. Then we have the passwords and forms. You could enable autofill unless there's a lot of confidential information. You could then uncheck that and the offer to save passwords. Again, it's your option whether you want to accept that or not. Then you can have a look at the saved passwords that are already there on your machine. 
from here you can search for them if you want you can delete them this one talks about https and secure socket layers from where you could manage your certificates this screen has some interesting options if you want to have a look at all the passwords that have been stored here on this particular browser all that can be accessed from this particular window in file we see something called new incognito window clicking on that opens up a new window which says that you've gone incognito now pages you view in this window won't appear in your browser history or search history and they won't leave other traces like cookies on your computer after you close all the open incognito windows however any files you download or bookmarks you create will be preserved of course you must remember that going incognito is not really going to be a hundred percent solution because websites could still collect data or share information about you isps or your employers could track the pages you visit of course if someone is standing behind you he's going to be able to see very clearly what you're doing Let's cancel this and go back to our main screen. The history option shows you your entire history, including the recently closed tabs and the recently visited websites. You could click on show full history. So it shows your entire history forever as long as you've set it up. Here, of course, you could click this button to clear your entire browsing history. Then of course you have the regular bookmarks option wherein you can set up your various bookmarks. That's about all for now. Thank you. I hope you found this video useful. Stay safe.